All right. Good evening. Um, tonight is Thursday, June 14th, 2018, and is a special meeting of the Board of Education District 64. Tom, please take the roll. Uh, here. 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 Uh, here. Anthony Borelli. Here. Rick Biaggi. Here. Eastman Two. Here. And Mark Eggerman. It will be here in five minutes. Our next meeting is scheduled for June 25th and will include a closed session for the board to discuss superintendent's evaluation. We will start on that date followed by the, uh, well, the, the uh, closed session will begin possibly before and after the uh, meeting on that date. We have three exceptions. Uh, yeah. Uh, tonight, uh, being that we have one single solitary item on our special meeting agenda, we'll move right along and uh, expedite our agenda. So Larry, I again turn to you, if you'll please lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first item, uh, as always, we have public comments for those folks who would like to make a statement. Coming, going, coming. He is coming. So before, before uh, the public comments start, nice. will we be, I looked at the agenda, the agenda, it just shows public comments before we discuss. Will we be offering the public an opportunity to speak after we discuss as well? And if we do decide to do that, I would recommend that it be a before or after situation, not a before and after, so we're not doubling up on comments, but at least giving the, the community an opportunity to decide whether they want to do it before or after they hear us discuss. Well, in my capacity, Tom, I feel that this is a special meeting asked for by board members, for board members, and I wanted to have this as a board discussion. However, it is within the board to determine how they would like to handle further comments by people either before or after conversation. So I will make a proposal and go around the horn here and ask if folks want to entertain further comments by the public um, during, after, before our discussion other than public comments. So, um, Fred, I'll start with you. Either public comments solely or entertain comments outside of public comments. I will also entertain comments during or after. Fred? Uh, uh, Larry? Sorry. I propose it, so yes. Okay. Um, Rick? So I just want to confirm, though, right now, Mr. Martin's up at the lectern. That, right. that is for public comment. Not, no, public comment on non-agenda items right now, and we're talking about entertaining public comment on an agenda item at a later time. Right. In the, yeah, so I'm fine in favor. I'm in favor of entertaining agenda item comments during the period in which we're discussing it. Okay. Eastman? I agree with the print. Okay. So if you have a comment on an agenda item, so I, sorry, I'm new to this. Uh, can I speak about the SRO? Well, we're going to be talking about the SRI. So if you can hold off on your comments until we actually start right. our conversation. All righty. Um, let's see. Let me get caught up here. You are. Let me see the number. I want to say maybe four. I didn't hear what she said. She's looking. I think people are. Four, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four, three. Are getting in here because of the new door situation. Okay. While we're waiting, I, I just wanted to make the I know Dr. Borelli's aware, um, but for myself tonight, uh, it was been very busy couple weeks for me, um, and I knew that we wanted to get a meeting in before June 25th. Um, and really, the only time period I had was 
this afternoon or this evening. Um, but I do for myself, but Carrie is here. I do have a hard stop. Um, I will have to leave at 7.30. Um, I'm on my way to St. Louis. I have bargaining all day tomorrow starting in the morning tomorrow, so I have to get on the road. So um, to the extent we are entertaining public comment, that's great. I just want to make sure that mm -hmm. if there's anything specifically from me that we do have time before 7.30 so that I can respond. But then certainly when I do leave, um, okay. Carrie is fully briefed on this issue and can, can remain past 7.30. Okay. So are we comfortable? Can we continue now? You ready? Yep. All righty. Yep. As you all may know, at our last meeting, which was absent two members, the board voted five to zero to forward a modified and corrected version of the SRR IGA to the City of Park Ridge and Township of Niles. Since that time, following protocol, members of that unanimous consensus have asked for further discussion. They have this right as members of the ascending voting side. Wait to vote rendered moot as the vote was unanimous. The district has therefore contacted the City of Park Ridge, Township of Niles, and asked them to hold the submitted documents until this discussion can occur. Therefore, no action has of yet taken place on any document other than the original submission. To clarify, the original submission by the unanimous consensus vote of five to nothing was purely to send our version to the respective city towns for their review and corrections, additions. It was not a vote of final acceptance. Once respectively reviewed, it would come back to the district for further corrections or even final acceptance if there were no changes from the city town. Tonight we have more discussion. I'll ask each requesting board member to voice the reason why they've called this meeting. And once all have spoken, the board may begin its discussion. Let's start first with Eastman. Um, well, it was, uh, you know, we're missing two uh, key members, our vice president, as well as uh, Fred, who wrote the mission statement. And so I thought it was important that they were actually present at the table when we had this discussion. I understand that we all carry an equal vote, um, but given that Fred was the author of it and um, and Rick was the one who, uh, at one point, uh, I don't know how long ago it was, suggested that we do uh, get that outside consultation from Echo and Williams on this. I thought it would be, it would have been nice to have their uh, voice at the discussion. Fred? I asked for this meeting because I had some concern about the, the mission statement. You know, I drafted the mission statement with the intent of trying to capture the different voices I was hearing. You know, I heard some members of the board express concern about behaviors in school and wanting to have a deterrent in those schools. I heard from the administration that they could buy into this SRO program because they could um, fold in the social emotional learning. I heard from Chief Kaminsky that there was this um, relationship building component. Um, and at the end of the day, I don't, I'm not entirely sure that this mission statement reflects you know, this board's intent for why the individuals on this board um, want this program. I'm also a little, a little concerned that, you know, this mission statement was adopted at the meeting, which Rick, Rick and I, were, unfortunately, were not present. And, you know, one of the recommendations from Echo was to get the, you know, the, the buy-in from stakeholders. And I'm not sure how we can forward it on to the city having just, you know, formally, I guess, adopted a mission statement at that, at that last meeting without giving folks an opportunity then to, to weigh in on that. And I know Rick at one point had suggested, you know, a couple different models for how we might um, get input on the mission statement. You know, last Monday, or this this past Monday, Chief Kaminsky spoke to the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting before City Council, and he expressed his position that the SRO program was for building relationships between the police officers and the students. And I think, you know, that has merit, um, but I don't think this board intends to spend $40,000 on an officer-friendly program. I think in some respects this mission statement's a little bit watered down based on, I think, what some of the members wanted to see. And I'm also terribly concerned that 
you know, we are opening the door to possibly spending upwards of $200,000 a year. This is a successful program, given that since we first started talking about this, we've learned that we've had to replace the carpenter HVAC. We have a crumbling administrative building. Uh, we learned subsequently that the SPED program needs work. Um, so this, this, these are some of the reasons why I wanted to kind of revisit at, at least the mission statement and maybe the entire program. All right, thank you. Tom? I <coughs> requested this meeting because I, I, although I voted to move the IGA along to City Council f simply for their review and, and feedback, uh, after giving it some thought and realizing that we were missing two components of our seven-man team or seven-member team here, I uh, was. I, I felt that it would be Im imperative for them to be here so I could hear from them uh, what they felt about uh, the, their final decision to move it along to City Council. I was also slightly concerned when I found out that uh, some members of the City Council had no idea that we've been working on this process for you know over a year now. And uh, although I, I'm sorry, almost a year. Okay. Almost. Uh, although I'm sure uh, you know Officer uh, Chief Kaminsky. Uh, was working well within his, you know, his rights to be here and discuss this with us. There may have been some sort of disconnect with, with how it was going to get back to the city council and, and when. I, I can fully understand that the city council probably would not have been brought into the picture until we actually provided them with something to review in the first place, because otherwise it's really not you know, their, their place to be making the decisions for D64. It's their place to be making decisions for you know the for what they what they control, and in, in that situation, they w they would have to wait for us to actually send them an IGA. I then reviewed the IGA and realized that although I feel and I still feel that that it it covers a lot and maybe the majority of what uh, what we we should have in it, I feel that maybe it's in its drafting it doesn't portray or it doesn't read as if everything is there. And maybe there just needs to be some slight modifications or additions, or maybe after tonight's meeting, we find out that there needs to be major modifications or additions. But I just, I just wanted to give it one last go before we send it to the city, have them have to mark it up, bring it back to us. If we can send them a document that all of us feel a little more comfortable with, I think it would lessen the burden on, on the city to have to review it to, to such an extensive uh, to, to such an extensive level, if we can provide them with a more full document, a document that's more uh, substantial and clear as to what we're what we're uh, trying to present. <clears throat> In addition, I felt that uh, the 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 mission for why we're doing this uh, took on a little bit of a life of its own over the period of time that we were discussing it. Uh, I have an opinion as to why I want the, the uh, SROs in our schools. And I think actually I may, I may just, whenever asked, I may just ask you know, Chief Kaminsky to speak on my behalf because after listening to his video, it's, I'm very in line with exactly what he said and exactly how he explained uh, how this program is intended. It has many levels, but the main reason for me to have this program is mostly the relationship between the police officers, the students. There are levels of security that come along with having the SRO there, absolutely. But the intent is to not have the SRO opening kids' lockers. So we need to maybe clarify. The, there's an intent, uh, there, there's uh, security levels that, that get added, that are an added value in case something drastic or bad happens, knock on wood, in our schools. And it happens to happen at the time that the police officer is there uh, on the part-time basis or during the full-time basis. And that's an added value. That, but those weren't the driving factors, in my, in, in my opinion. So I felt that we just needed some clarification, get a better product out there. It also gave us some time to maybe compile and listen to some of the stakeholders' feedback, feedback that has been given to us uh, piecemeal throughout this whole entire process. I was able, thankfully, with you know the help of a lot of the stakeholders, to get it in more of a, you know, more of a all in one place that, that that would help us kind of understand exactly what we what they felt we were missing. 
So I felt that, that that the time that was given was very helpful. So that's why I called. Okay. Well, thank you, all three of you, for that input and helps to focus on this. And I'm wondering if the first question that I should ask the board is whether there is enough consensus that we continue with this discussion. And if there's a consensus that we continue with this discussion, then we'll start off by reviewing the uh, the uh, article of um, the Fred's preamble. So, um, I, can I just make a suggestion there? Yeah. Um, I agree that the first step should first make sure that a majority of the board um, is, has an interest in reconsidering what was, was decided. And I want to make sure that I'm clear on this. At the last board meeting, we did not take a formal vote to enter into the agreement. Um, we reached a consensus and directive was given to legal counsel of what the next steps are. So I just, because there was some confusion out there about that, there was no formal vote. So I do think that the first uh, action item should be to make sure that a majority of the board does want to engage further dialogue. And then number two, before we jump into the mission statement, before we jump into the IGA, before we talk about a potential MOU, um, board member Sanchez, brought up an issue that really, I, in my opinion, um, is priority over all of those, which is whether or not we're interested in a program. Um, he did bring up that new things have come to light, costs, things like that. So before we talk about a mission statement, before we talk about any of those things, I think the initial question is, are we proceeding with an SRO program? Um, after that, I would advise that the dialogue is, if, it, if the, the answer there is affirmative, that we are going to proceed. Um, then again, before diving into the mission statement, before diving into the IGA, we tackle this issue of stakeholder engagement and a potential MOU. Because again, that's where all these things flow from. Um, so then if the, that is an answer in the affirmative, that we do want to take a step back and engage more stakeholders and maybe memorialize that in an MOU, after that's done, I think that's when we start talking about the mission statement and the IGA, and I don't know if we can do that tonight if that's the decision you make, because all those other things flow from that MOU if that is the choice that the board's going to make tonight. So um, just wanted to add that. So I think that number one, should we reconsider? Number two, do we have a majority of the board in favor of proceeding with this plan? And then number three, if the answer to that is yes, well, what does that look like from here moving forward? Thank you. So uh, that being said, and adding to what I said, I, I think that we should go person by person and decide, do you want to have this conversation? And, uh, and, and uh, if you agree, then we will review and, and plan on how we're going to do that review. So um, I can start with Fred. Fred, do we have this conversation or, or do we shut down this program? In my mind now, in my position, is that this has always been a want, uh, not a need. Uh, since we started discussing this, we have other needs, and um, I think there's other ways to accomplish what Chief Kaminsky and Tom are, are talking about, and I think that opening the door to you know, possibly spending up to $200,000 a year to make this full-time at both schools of successful um, is not something we should be doing when we just talked last meeting about you know, having to issue $10 million in bonds. So my vote would be uh, you know, to t at the very least to table this, but to uh, focus our efforts on other things and, and move on. So no? No. no. All right. Larry? Uh, yes. I, I, I think we need an SRO. I think it can be a positive, viable program. Uh, you know, I've talked to five other school districts in the local area that have SROs. I think Park Ridge should have had SROs 25 years ago, but I can't speak for them 25 years ago. I can only speak now. And it's another one of those programs like we're maintenance of the buildings, and you're right, Fred, but as I told you a couple of board meetings ago, it stops now. There are some things we need to do as a school board right now for the future, okay? And SRO is one of those programs. I fully support the SRO program, and I, I think we should continue the conversation with it. And I think we, we may, if we're, if we're going to do it, we should make sure we do it right, and we, may, we do it in a way where everybody, including the stakeholders, are, are comfortable with it. Uh, to Fred's point, 
you know, it's, it's, this is a pilot program. It's not going to cost us 200000 If it is successful, there is no value you can put on a successful SRO program. So whether it costs 200, 300, or half a million, the safety of our children, the, the, the relationships and bonds that can be built between the children and the police officers doesn't have a value that you can, you can put on it. So it starts out, you know, as a, as a pilot program to see if it works. And if we are blessed with it to be successful and it ends up costing us 200000 to be a full-time program, then that's a blessing I'm welcoming. <clears throat> Uh, Fred, I appreciate your fiscal conservatism. Uh, I, I strongly support that, and I cringe every time another nickel has to go out the door. So uh, I, I certainly appreciate your, your uh, standing up for that. Um, however, this is, as Tom said, this is not intended to cost those limits. Uh, this is a pilot, and we may continue, uh, if it's accepted, the low-level couple of days a week, couple of hours per day kind of situation. It, it is not for this board to decide if we're going to do any more than that and fund to the level that you're mentioning. It, it may come to pass at some future time, but that's not what we're talking about now. We're talking about having this discussion on this pilot on this program. Um, I personally am in favor of the program. I'd like to continue talking about it. Rick? Um. So I, I've vacillated on this issue a lot over the last year, and I've shared my recent opinions on this with many of you. Um, I am not in favor of continuing this discussion right now for many of the reasons that Fred um, just illustrated. I think most importantly, um, we sat through a nearly six-hour meeting on uh, Monday, Monday at this point. <laughs> Um, and many, much of that meeting was spent on budget, and, and for the first time I heard um, that we're going to be spending well into the seven figures on a significant uh, amount of new teachers, teachers' assistants, we're going to be bringing in behavior interventionists, we're going to be bringing in deans, dean or deans of discipline, uh, social workers, psychologists. I'm not sure where we're going to get the money to pay for that let alone a pilot. And again, I, I, I guess, Tony, I respectfully disagree that this would ever, it, it, first of all, if we could even come up with a metric on how we're going to determine whether or not this pilot is successful or not, which we've, we've, seven of us have failed here to come up with any type of way in which to discern whether or not it's going to be successful. But setting that aside for the moment, it, it, I can't envision a situation in which, assuming we all think it's successful, that we wouldn't be implementing an SRO five days a week, eight hours a day in the schools, if that's the purpose of this. And again, if we go back to if it's the purpose for security and, and, and discipline and everything else. And I know, uh, and Mr. Mayor, you're sitting in the back of the room, and Mr. Mazuka, you're sitting in the back of the room. Um, I know for a fact, having gone through this with the Park District, that the headcount uh, that you're going to ask us to, to take on is about $150,000 per officer. And, uh, and, and Mr. Mazuka's raising his finger is higher. So that's per officer. So actually, Fred, you're wrong. It's actually more like three to $400,000. We can't afford that. We simply can't. And more importantly, if we're gonna have this behavior interventionist, if we're gonna have this psychologist, the social worker, these deans of discipline, let's see if that works first. We know we have discipline issues going on in Emerson and Lincoln. Let's try that out. If that works, then all this is for naught. If it doesn't work and it was an abject failure, then in a year or two or whatever we want to do, this board or another board can come back and discuss SRO. Maybe that's the way to go at that point. But I, I just can't. I, I still don't. I'm still in shock from Monday night on how we're going to pay for all of the things that were put and that we all agreed to unanimously. Um, at that meeting the other night, I'm not sure. And then to top this on, on, put this on top of that, I don't, I don't get it. So, Mark. Well, um, I'd like to go on the record again that I am for this program, and um, it, I just feel like you know. <laughs> You know, we, we've really, we've really spent an awful lot of time on this and trying to thread the needle and answer everybody's concerns, um, both for and uh, against the SRO program. Um, to reiterate um, Tony's and and Tom's point, um, it's 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 a pilot program. So, um, you 
some of the board members may think there is or isn't measurable results. Um, I don't agree with that. I think I think we'll see if this program works based on the mission statement and some of the other um, things that, that Chief Kaminsky um, had mentioned that the program would bring to our district. Um, I would like to continue the discussion and um, I think when we're talking about uh, upwards of $300,000, we don't have to have that particular discussion until after the pilot program has been concluded. So I'd like to see us implement a pilot program to give this a fair shake and then um, we can discuss it further at that time. Thank you. Uh, Eastman? Um, a lot's happened in the last year, uh, you know, between, you know, things that surfaced between buildings and grounds and flood issues. Um, and uh, I concur with Fred that, you know, that we have, I think, different ways to spend our money. And, um, you know, you know, a few nights ago, we decided to not have a second AP at, uh, at Lincoln. And that's a full-time employee we're looking at who could do a lot of things about 80% of the things that our SRO is saying to do. And why can't we do a, you know, we can still do special assemblies. We can still have guest speakers. We can still have, you know, a friendly relationship with our police officers. But why does it have to be our employee I mean, during that time? Right? And I understand building a great relationship with our police officers is awesome, but why is that our burden to do? Um, so in light of that, given that, you know, I voted for having that second AP at Lincoln, right? and um, I have trouble voting yes for this when that one didn't pass. So I'm a no. Okay. Well, I appreciate everybody's comments and input, and by a vote of four to three, we have voted to continue discussion. We have not voted to accept the program, but we have voted to continue this discussion to see if we can further iron out our differences and come up with what may be a, a good pilot program for this district. So, Tony, do you have any suggestions? from your perspective on how to, do we start from the well, beginning? First of all, I just want to make clear, and I, and I understand you're trying to, I just don't want anyone to get a misconception we that, that we're taking a formal vote. We reached a consensus that right. a majority of the board wants to continue the discussion. Um, I, I believe, and certainly this is at the pleasure of the board, you guys can overrule me, I believe the next discussion is whether or not um, you want to further engage stakeholders um, through town hall meetings, sounding boards that will eventually result um, in an MOU. I think Board Member Biagi brought this up in his written statement at the last meeting. I know that Board Member Sanchez just mentioned it. Um, so before we dive back into the nitty gritty of the IJ and the mission statement, I think we have to have some dialogue on whether or not um, we want to, there's another step before we get there. And, and just to rehash, and I know you may all be well aware of this, the board action on this um, to actually proceed with this program was August 28th of 2017, so almost a year ago. Um, since then, there's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine meetings, including tonight, um, where the SRO program was on the agenda for discussion. One of those meetings was, in addition to this meeting, was solely for the discussion of the SRO program. And then I believe um, also in addition to the meetings I just cited where it was actually on the agenda, there were another couple meetings in September, October where we definitely did hear some, some public comment on that issue. So um, just to lay that, that foundation of where we came from and how we got here today. Um, so now just to have you guys again talk to each other um, and see if we can't reach a consensus on whether or not um, we want to proceed with an option where we're going to further engage stakeholders and then eventually take the philosophies, the agreements, um, the tenants of this program from that, that, that kind of discussion into an MOU um, which is different than our IGA. The MOU would just be reflecting what it is you heard and what it is that we're trying to accomplish. And then from there would flow, obviously, mission statements, intergovernmental agreements, things of those nature. Um, you know, we've had the discussion about the necessity of an MOU early on, and we felt the consensus at that time was that the document itself contained enough information to serve as an MOU. So let me ask the board, does the board feel that's probably the best place to begin? 
and, and does the board feel that we should create an MOU and, and create a, uh, within this body of the MOU, create the standards from which the, the IGA document will flow. Yeah. So, Fred? And before we jump, just to add to that, I, I want to be clear that the IGA is a, is a contract between us and the city or the village, which is going to dictate how the parties need to operate vis-a-vis -vis each other. Um, and we talked about this, I believe it was back in October of 2000, the, the concept of an MOU, taking out the word MOU, the concept here is what kind of stakeholder engagement are we comfortable with, and then do you want to reduce it to writing? That's one option. Well, the MOU yeah. is, is the more of the principles right. that you right. want to do the right. IGA over. And well, if one of those principles is yeah. more engagement, then you would incorporate that in the IGA. Yeah. So for example, there will be things that potentially will go in your MOU that would never go in the IGA. Right. Right? Things that we don't need right. the other party to agree to, complaint procedures, metrics, information, all those things that we could do unilaterally on our own may make their way to an MOU but would never be reflected in an IGA because we don't need the other party to agree to it. Right. Um, so just to clear it, and sorry to cut you off, Board Member Sanchez, go ahead. No, no, thank you. Um, so I guess my, one of my biggest concerns is that, you know, we have, I guess, seemingly adopted this mission statement at the last meeting, and I, I'm still not confident that it reflects you know, the reasons why individual members on this board want an SRO program in the first place. And, it, and I don't think it's consistent with Chief Kaminsky's view of why we're doing this program. So if we're not all on the same page and we haven't had the, the public weigh in on this mission statement, um, I don't think we have uh, yeah, the, question, the stakeholders. I'm sorry, but the yeah. question is, is should this board create the IGA, I'm sorry, create the uh, mission statement. Uh, MOU. MOU, thank you. Should the, this board create the MOU which establishes the principles from which the IGA will flow? Would you, would you be in favor of establishing the uh, MOU which will hopefully clarify a lot of the... I guess it depends on how we're going to do that. Are we going to get buy-in from other people? Are we going to have a committee? Um, how, how, we, how you propose to do that? That could be in part of the... Uh, I guess I would advocate that if we're going to do that, which I, I'm, I'm in favor of, that we would have some sort of buying. Either we have either uh, Rick suggested, you know, getting input from PTOs. I would, you know, prefer maybe even creating a, a, a subcommittee where we have people, um, you know, working with, you know, the stakeholders, the community members, to try and determine what is it that should be in here. But I, I guess it depends on how we do it. But yes, I would be in favor of the MOU. Sure, sure, Larry. I'm in favor of the MOU, but you know, we've had 11 board meetings. Each one of them had had public comments. It's been on the website. There have been copies made. Um, we've had a multitude of hours and discussions about the SRO program. Uh, in fact, we don't hear anything new anymore. We hear the this, this same argument we've heard for the last six, seven months, or the same positive comments we've heard for the last six or seven months. And, um, you know, uh, if uh, an MOU is going to help push this program along, then let's do an MOU. But a mission statement is not for each. Uh, individual of the board's input. A mission statement is a, a, a short definition of the mission of the SRO. And a pilot program is designed to tweak that program for that year. So that mission statement may evolve throughout the year. The program itself will evolve throughout the year. And if it hasn't evolved to a point where we feel comfortable voting for it in the second year, we don't do it. So it, again, if an MOU is going to help move this thing forward, uh, let's do it. All right, Tom? 
so yes, the my my quick answer is, but you know it's not going to end quick. So you never. Uh, my quick answer is that yes, we we should definitely do an MOU. I I feel that. Although we've we've pretty much touched on everything, maybe we've done um, done it in a different way. So I think if we just do the process the way we the way we've been advised to do it, we create the MOU. We we put in certain things that we know that people want to see. We we add things that normally don't go in the IGA. We don't do the MOU after we get the approval for the IGA if we do get it. We do the MOU before, so that way, when we are asking stakeholders to buy into an SRO program, they also have the MOU to look at. They also know clearly what the mission statement is. They know what the metrics are going to be used uh, to judge the program. They know, you know, what, what the plan is moving forward. They have all that stuff in their hands when we're when we're asking them to buy into why we want an SRO. So, you know, we, I, I've asked the community and, and several of them have been very kind to take up their time. I don't know if I should mention their names or not, I don't know if they want me to, um, but they know who they are and they were very helpful in <clears throat> putting together what they feel if that, let's be clear, some of them who did help produce this uh, information are not in favor of the SRO program, but they did still take their time to put together something for us to look at. and kind of guide us as to what the stakeholders would like to see in a program if one were to pass. And I think it would, I think it would just be fair to all to create this document, have it clear, have all of us agree on what it is so that we're clear, and simultaneously we can still be working on the IGA that we're going to send to City Council. But before we vote on any IGA, and before we even, I would even say before we even present an IGA to the City Council, we should have this document and all the other levels that need to go along with it in place so that we're checking boxes. You know, we've had uh, experts tell us what they felt we needed to do. And I think we've, we've touched a lot of those, but maybe we weren't clear as to where we touched them. And maybe the IGA doesn't show that we took all those things into consideration because like you said, the IGA doesn't have all that information in it. So the public is looking at this IGA and saying, hey, where's, where's this? Where's this? Where, where, you know, why hasn't this been addressed? And that's because we're, we were going to address that in an MOU. So if we had our MOU along with an IGA, we may have been able to alleviate a lot of that. So my vote is that we absolutely have an MOU to go along with an IGA. And if it takes Another month. I mean, we've been doing. We've been going at this for a year. We've already invested our time in it. Let's just get it right so everyone feels real comfortable with an SRO program that we all can be, you know, happy with. To Rick's point, I agree, Rick. We've, you know, got other issues, and we're spending money on on all those those levels that you said for certain programs that are that are in need of it. We we've realized that we need to throw some time, effort, and money into certain programs, but we also have a whole student body that we have to that we have to consider and they're they're part of the people that we have to pay attention to as well so if we can find a way to maneuver our money and make all that work and this work and whatever else you know comes crashing down on us we need to keep pushing forward and doing it responsibly fiscally responsibly but at the same time not allowing that fiscal need to be responsible to disallow us from paying attention to certain programs. I surely would not want money to ever be an issue in our special ed uh, 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 special ed program ever. And I don't think that we should allow money to be an issue on our, our child's development with police and safety. So I think, yes, we should go with them. Okay. All right, just before we move on, I just, a couple comments. Um, number one, um, you seem to be directing. I wasn't. Uh, okay, I was going to say most of your comments think, at me. I, the I just want to make clear, I, I have no dog. No, no, I think, I think okay. the reason I'm looking at you is because okay. you're going to be doing a lot of the drafting. Okay, got it. And All right, so I just want to make sure it's clear. So I, I wanted you to, to be clear as to, as to, I want us to be very, okay. very thoughtful in our drafting right. so that we, we I, hit as many topics and then check as many boxes okay. as we can. So I just want to be clear. Yeah, <laughs> yes. clear. Yeah. 
It's not my decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is for you to talk amongst yourselves. I also didn't. Um, wanna, I also didn't want to look out there right. and, and make them feel like right. I was picking on one Got of them. It. So uh, number two, and and I, and I, I hope that Echo Williams, Provenzale would appreciate this. Um, you know, as lawyers, we can't hold ourselves out as experts um, on anything. Uh, they were consultants that have some experience in this, and they gave you a report on it. But to call them experts, lawyers aren't supposed to hold themselves out as experts on one one topic. Um, and then finally, I just want to reiterate, and I know I've said this a lot of times that yes we can do our work here um, and we can come up with an MOU and an IGA that everybody here is very 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 happy with but it needs to go to the other side and a lot of the items um, that I've seen come up over and over again it's not that we haven't addressed them we have addressed them, but then in working with the city, um, they're not comfortable with all the provisions. So we have brought those back to you. We've dial had dialogue about that, and we've decided to proceed despite that. So I just wanted to make those three points clear. All right. Um, yes, we have had tremendous discussion on this issue, and we have submitted it. They made corrections. They came to us. We agreed to modify those corrections. We're going to send it back. Um, it all comes down to clarity. And though we've discussed this and we have, uh, obviously at the last meeting there was some sense of agreement, 5-0 to send it back for further discussion amongst the city and, and township, but our job is to make it clear to the public as well. Not only clear amongst ourselves, but clear to the public and perhaps we fell short of that. I think that we've incorporated a lot of suggestions, a lot of comments. But uh, if they're, as Tom said, if they're buried within the body of the IGA, they're not going to be seen. And I think creating a, uh, a, a MOU that up front and central uh, uh, delineates the exact principles that we all want to see. And there's no question that if the IGA deviates from those principles, obviously that's, that's a problem. So in, in the sense of uh, clarity, creating an IGA would be beneficial. As Larry said, I agree with that if the IGA and its clarity and its explanation and its understanding can help foster the program, I'm all for it. MOU. 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 Uh, you said MOU. IGA. I keep doing that. I'm so. Um, so uh, one quick comment before I go into my substantive comment in this, and that is, um, I, I think it's inaccurate, and Mr. Mayor, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think it's inaccurate to suggest that the city per se opined on no. The first iterations, they're lawyers. No, you're right. The well, city council. I, I don't know who's, yeah, but our communications have been with the attorneys right. for both and so, Niles and Park Ridge, so I don't know <coughs> what layers are behind that. That's right, and I think that some of our concern here is that just like the stakeholders, all of the stakeholders, in my opinion, haven't been involved in this process, the city council hasn't been involved. And, and that's where some of the thoughts here that the city council really didn't know a whole lot of what was going on here. Um, it was between, and I'm not suggesting you did anything wrong. By that, that your job was to go to the lawyers, and but it, it, we're, we're kidding ourselves if we think that the city council is either you know 7-0 or in even a majority in favor of the concept of this, let alone the IGA itself. We don't know. We don't know the answer to that question because it's never the question's never been before them. So I just want to clear that up. But I want to just read a sentence out of the Echo report. Um, it's it's recommendation A. It says a mission statement or memorandum of understanding should be developed through this communicative process and should be drafted and incorporated into the IGA setting out with clarity the collective conscience of all stakeholders explicitly addressing the reasons for roles and objectives of the SRO. So role, set aside roles and objectives for the moment. I don't even think there's seven people on this board who agree on the reason for an SRO, let alone the community. So. We don't even need to get to this, the logistics of this program until we all can agree on why, why the heck we're even doing this. I mean, we had a 4-3 vote. This is not like some sort of earth-shattering um, you know, landslide. landslide here of the, of the board saying we should do this. We have 4-3 right now. So if we're split, I'm, I'm guessing the community's pretty split on this as well, too. And, I, and again, I've, I said this in my email to the board, which was made public by FOIA, and whether this is disrespectful or not, but we've had the same group of, of naysayers, I will say, come to the meeting who aren't in favor of the program, which is fine. We have not gotten a true cross-section. Maybe there isn't a cross-section of the community. I don't know. But we haven't actively gone out and sought a cross-section of the community. I don't know exactly how to do that. My idea of going to the PTOs and A's 
may or may not work, I don't know. I can tell you that doing a survey monkey survey on email is not gonna cut the mustard when we couldn't even get people to say whether their kids were gonna go from Carpenter to Lincoln or, or Emerson, so I, that's not gonna work. We're gonna have to be much more proactive than that and go out and whether that's having town hall meetings or whatever it is, I don't know. But my, my own personal opinion is that we have to answer that seminal question first before we get to any of the other junk that we've got to get to in this MOU and eventually IGA. Uh, Mark, before you go on, I just want to but one comment, Rick said. Um, I, I absolutely agree with most of what you said, Rick. Uh, the only thing is this program is developed by the district for the district and because it's an intergovernmental program, eventually we'll have to have uh, the city council and township weigh in on whether they want it or not. But if this board decides that we want it, uh, it, it is our decision independent of the current disposition of the city council and, and how Niles feels about it. So, you know, I, I almost don't want to even bring in any discussion of the city of Park Ridge and Township of Niles simply because this is for us to decide if we want this for our district. And if we do and it gets turned down, that's a, that's a different story. Okay, so, so if, I could, if I could just respond one second to that, and that is, maybe that's very, very true, but then shouldn't we simply, rather than go through all of the machinations of coming up with, I know we already have a draft of the IGA, but let's suppose we're gonna scrap that and start from scratch. An IGA, an MOU, all the other stuff we need to do, just to take it over to city council to find they kill it. Because if they kill it, we've just wasted all of this time and your money's going to you and everything else. Rick, if I Why don't we come up with a philosophical understanding here of whether or not, well, not whether, why we want this in the first place, what the purpose is, go to the two cities and say, you on board with that? And if they are, then we go back and do the heavy lifting on the IGA and the MOU. But if they're not on board philosophically with it, then they can kill it. It's their right. They can tell us, no, we're not gonna give you an officer. And, and I. I don't, I'm not speaking for the board right now, but my guess is if Park Ridge says no, or if Niles says no and the other says yes, we're probably still gonna kill the program. We're probably not gonna put one in one school and not in the other. I would hope to God we wouldn't do that. Um, just like I would hope we wouldn't put a dean of discipline in one school and not the other, but we did. So, anyway. Okay, Mark. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with moving forward with the uh, memorandum of understanding. And um, I guess, my, my thinking is, is is that we we have done a great deal of discussion on this, and um, you know we have been transparent and open in in terms of doing so. All the documents have been there for the public to review. Um, you know the fact the fact that the people that are generally opposed to this program are the ones that show up at the meetings shouldn't be the reason why we have decided that we should first of all jump through all the hoops that we have to um, check a box as Tom would say and so forth so um, you know when the when it was time for the green lawn care when it was time for um, you know uh, hot lunch all that stuff yeah people show up right um, you know I talk to a lot of people I know a lot of people in this community and I know a lot of people support it they don't necessarily come here to voice their opinion about it but there is a, a, a good sense of um, uh, a good feeling about this program should it be implemented and a, a good portion of the community I don't know what that number is but they are on board with this so that being said um, you know we we can take into account everybody's opinion I think we have to this point and I don't really think we necessarily have to um, you know bring on the PTO or anybody else we were elected to do this job we can take opinions from the community, we can take opinions fr from one another, and we're gonna formulate those opinion opinions, and then we're gonna come up with a, a, a conclusion and a solution. So, you know, in my opinion, if, um, if somebody doesn't like my opinion about this particular program, they can vote me out of office. So I'm here to, to do what I think is, is the right thing. This program to me is the right thing to do. I've listened to both sides and um, if it takes a MOU to further the discussion, let's do it. Eastman. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry Eastman, before you go, I, I need to address something with Rick. Rick, I, got, I have a question. If we, 
I, I'm, I'm trying to grasp my brain around and I, I think I agree with you, I'm just not quite sure how it fits. But for us to, how do we ask or how do we request from city council their, their, or solicit their opinion on the matter without providing them with an IGA, with an MOU, with, so I, I like the idea of saying, hey, let's not waste all this time and, and ask city council what their opinion is. If I'm not mistaken, and please correct me if I'm wrong, anyone, anyone who's out there or sitting over here, city council's real only, the, the, the city council doesn't decide whether D64 uh, needs, wants, or, or desires a, a SRO officer in their schools. And I don't think it's their job to, and I don't think, I don't think any of them want that to be their job. I think the only thing they have to concern themselves with is the, the officer that we're asking them to provide. We could have gone and gotten a security officer from a security company instead of a police officer, but that doesn't fall into what we want the officer to be. We want him to be from our community. So we are asking them to borrow, uh, actually pay for, one of their officers. Their only real uh, issue, in my opinion, and again, I may be wrong, I, don't, I haven't been on the city council, so I don't know what the inner workings are, but it's to just make sure that if they agree to give us an officer, that they're comfortable with the exposure they may have uh, legally, uh, if, if there's any type of, uh, if something happens in the school, and they wanna make sure that they don't get sued, that we're the only ones gonna, that are gonna get sued. Uh, but aside from that, I don't think we're asking the city for their opinion on whether they feel individually or collectively as a group, they, they can tell us, for sure they can come here and tell us as a citizen of Park Ridge, but as city council, I'm not quite sure that that's their role to decide whether D64 board wants an officer in their school. Well, their job is to make sure that they're okay with the intergovernmental agreement and they're comfortable with what, that with, uh, offering us one of their officers and what those terms are of those officers, but not so much whether we want an, a D60 or a uh, SRO in our schools. And I find it, honestly, a little unsettling that opinions are being given on whether we should do this or not before they've even seen an IGA, if, if, that's being, if, if that's actually happening. Well, l let me give what I understand to be a real life example of where I think it go, go off the rails with the cities. If our purpose for the SRO, and I'm just speaking hypothetically right now, if our purpose for the SRO program was, was purely for security, and it was stated unequivocally in the, in the mission statement in the IGA and the MOU that it's for security purposes, we're gonna have them there, and it's a deterrent effect, and that's it, that's the role then the city is gonna evaluate whether or not it makes sense for them to do that. Assume, again, assuming all the bells and whistles are in the IGA that are there to protect the city, that's one thing. Let's go the other extreme. Let's say that our mission statement and our purpose and our, our MOU and, and our IGA say that the job of the, of the SRO is to teach in the classroom, is to, be a, is to be a counselor to kids, is to meet with them one-on-one -on, -one on a daily basis and, and work with them and use social emotional learning skills and um, you know, act like a quasi-social worker or a psychologist for them. My guess is that the city is gonna say no to that because their officers aren't trained to do that and it's putting them in quite a bit of legal exposure to have them in that position. So I think depending on what our purpose for this program is, that could very much change their opinion. Which is, which is why I was asking, we have to, we have no choice but to spend the time, jump through the hoops, do the M MOU, do the IGA, and provide, which was one of the main reasons why I requested we pull this back, because I didn't want to present them with something that was going to confuse them. If it was obviously confusing the stakeholders, it was most likely going to end up causing some confusion at the city council and they wouldn't have been able to really understand why we're doing this so they wouldn't really know how to vote on it one way or the other. So unfortunately, I, although I'd love to get to save the time, I'd love to get the city council to tell us, hey, you know what, just so you know, none of us like the idea so we're not going to vote for it. 
But I just don't think that's fair to ask them that question without providing them yeah. with with all the information. So there's a lot of so we're kind of stuck. We're kind of stuck. Well, you're, there's a lot of speculation going on here about what other entities will say. I would rather if it, if this is that important of an issue, then part of your stakeholder process that will eventually conclude with an MOU would be sitting down at a meeting with the, with the city council with the mayor uh, i know we've had the chiefs here but you know if we i see where we seem to be going here and not to cut you off yeah. but one, one quick yeah. one, one quick question uh, is, is it am i correct in saying um or ask I'm just, i'll just ask the question did district 207 have to go to the city council to get approval for their SOR approval. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that question, but you, you're taking a point that I was going to say that I, I believe Park Ridge and, and Niles already have SRO programs in, in other schools. So that, that answer is yes. That answer is yes. I, yeah. It was actually answered in the video okay, that so, I watched earlier. Okay. Uh, so, signed by the city of Park Ridge. Okay, so, so, so if, if the answer is yes, then the question becomes, is our uh, IGA going to be, is it so radically different from the current one that they wouldn't accept it. So well, I could answer that as well too. The our, if anything happens good out of this last year of doing this, it has brought to light certain things and it may make other IGAs better. It may have, you know, new eyes be put on them when they get brought back for re for review. Uh, but our efforts, at the very minimum, by bringing the uh, ELK report in and all this discussion that we've put in and all the feedback we've gotten from stakeholders has created a, a nice groundwork for anybody that is, is either currently using an SRO, wants to use an SRO in the future, there will be, there, those are there. So yes, our IGA, in my opinion, is going to be much different and much better and much more uh, inclusive well, than anything out there. Well, we are, right, wait, 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 wait. Before well, anybody it's goes Eastman's on. turn. <laughs> Eastman's turn, but before anybody goes on, we're talking about creating an MOU and uh, whether you want to go and incorporate questions about the city, you can build that into the MOU. Right. We're talking about the desire for an MRU, so please. So what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Are you in favor of creating an MOU? Um, if it will help communicate with our constituents and even amongst ourselves, right out loud, uh, then yes. Yes. So we have overwhelming consensus that we, we build an MOU. Now the question is, how would the board like to do that? We can have an internal discussion. We can have, um, uh, there are documents that provide uh, suggestions on how to proceed with the creation of an MOU. Uh, we can form a committee uh, with uh, uh, stakeholders involved from the community, with board members. I mean, there's multitude of ways that we can go about creating this. Is there a way to ask the city council to have a representative on that committee? They have an intergovernmental liaison that should yeah. be sitting on whatever committee that we establish. So if we do a committee, is the committee going to be, uh, we'll have to follow the Open Meetings yes. Act rules? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, yeah. so, but we can schedule a lot more of those if we need to. We don't have to wait for our meetings to have those meetings. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. no. Oh. Okay. Okay. So my, I, I like that idea. And I like the idea of, of adding stakeholders and city council and police chief and Niles and everybody to that committee and we move forward and I'd like to be on that committee. Well, <laughs> let's, let's go around and ask if that's actually the way the board wants to proceed. Can I go so, first? <laughs> <laughs> Feeling Eastman, I, I looked at you first, Eastman, so yes, please. Yes. All right, Mark? Yep, you bet, Tom. You know, like I said, uh, we've spent an inordinate amount of time on this, and it's our, I think we've already hashed a lot of this out. Um, I think the agreement that we were that we had sent over five nothing um, had already been you know, thoroughly vetted. I, I, I don't understand why there's any concern that the that the city of Park Ridge is going to turn this this agreement down. But I'll just I'll go along with it. Yes. All right, Rick. Yes, to, uh, to the committee that Tom suggested. And I agree as well. Tom. Yes. Larry? I'm going to 
to make a short comment to uh, the the city of Park Ridge Police Chief and the city of Niles Police Chief have been here on several occasions to include other officers. I just find it hard to believe that, that, that the chiefs haven't had some discussions with aldermen and mayors of those cities. I, I, I would hope that, that those conversations are taking place. Um, and I've heard a lot of talk about grievance and how to file grievances. I, I, I don't know where, somewhere down the line, some citizens have lost faith in the ability of police departments to take care of grievances and take care and, and represent cities when they come in front of other boards. Um, I, I don't know where that switch was flipped on, somewhere down the line, I suppose. But uh, again, like Mark, if we have to form a committee, uh, then let's form the committee. Uh, let's get the right people on that committee. And uh, let's move forward. And uh, God bless the aldermen, and uh, we should probably have the some of the school administration from the two middle schools on that committee, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, let's go forth and do great things. Fred. Yes, to the committee. Okay, so uh, the board has decided that we will create an MOU with the formation of a committee. And if that's the case, then I think the board needs to decide who they'd like to have on the committee. And uh, this should be a reasonably simple. Uh, 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 Can I just? I mean, this now establishing a committee is an action item. We, we don't do have that. an action item on tonight's agenda. So, if the board is going to establish a formal board committee, it would have to be posted on an agenda at a future board meeting. So well, although you can okay. solicit, I guess, volunteers, but it, the actual establishment of a committee would have to happen at a future, future meeting. Well, we're, you're absolutely correct. Right. We're still having a discussion here. So it, the way I'm looking at it is, it is a consensus to develop a committee. It, we have to do an action item to, to do that officially, mm -hmm. and we can do that on the 25th. Um, but we are coming to a consensus on who's going to be on that committee so that on the 25th we can officially enact the development of a board committee consisting of X, Y, and Z. So I think that's certainly within the allowance, is that not? It certainly is. Yeah, you can certainly discuss that tonight. I would look to the board members of whether or not it's, it's premature to dive into that much detail. I think what you usually do, and you don't have to accept my opinion here, but what you usually do is you establish the committee. The committee will bring back a recommendation to the whole board, timeline, who should be on it, the rec and at that time the board then has dialogue and decides to fine tune it so that the, that the whole point of the committee is to be able to let that smaller group work and bring you the work. If that's not how you want to do it, you can certainly do it a different way, but that is usually the best practice, is to establish the committee, have them meet, dive into all of this, because there's a lot to consider. Well, yeah, so I think, what, I think you're talking about establishing the committee, that's what I want to do. Right. I want to see who's going to be the members of the okay. committee. Can I, and, okay. and that's the next the step that who's I'm interested. Can, who's yeah, interested? Can I just make a comment that I think is relevant to why we should push that discussion off, and that is I suspect that there is consensus among this board to also create a committee for special education. And if we're going to do that at the next meeting, which I intend to add as an agenda item, then that means we're going to need another two board members. It's already on the agenda. But a, a, a specific motion to, cre to form a special ed committee like we're talking about for SRO. Um, if we're going to do that, we're going to need two board members for that too. So it would seem to make sense to have that bigger conversation if we're going to have two committees that need to be staffed by board members to do it all at once. Because if two people say tonight they want to do SRO, and then next week we approve, or a couple of weeks we approve uh, a special ed one, that may I want to be, I want to be on, on that committee too. Yeah. Well, and some people may want to be on both, some people may want to be on neither, but I, I would just think we'd want to have that conversation together rather than apart. Well. You're, you're, you're correct, Rick. It was my intention. Uh, we've had a member of the community, in fact, at the last meeting, I quickly mentioned to Dr. Heinz that we should do so, and uh, that will be added, but the, the question still remains, 
are there, is there uh, interested board members who would like to sit on this particular committee? And now that you've raised the issue and remind the board that there may very well be a board committee for SPED, uh, keeping that in mind, is there at least interest among board members who would like to sit on the committee for uh, the um, SRO. SRO program? Yes. So do, is there any volunteers at this point for the SRO board committee, just so we know going forward there's going to be board representation? Tom, you're very I will, I will, I will, even though that there's a good possibility that this program doesn't go through, we still have not all agreed that this program is even going to happen. I have no problem investing my time in sitting on a committee to make sure if it does happen, it happens right. Okay, so Tom has volunteered uh, potentially to be one of the, um, the members of the SRO board committee. Uh, one other volunteer, please. My only problem is that I have every intention of sitting on the SPED committee, <laughs> you know, and uh, already yep. on the policy committee. But, uh, I, you know, I'd like to have someone else volunteer with SRO. If they don't, then I'll do it. But um, I'd, I, I'd I, like I, have I have a lot of focus on special I'd, ed. No, I'd like to have somebody on the committee who actually voted against continuing this conversation if you want my personal opinion. Yeah. I'd like to have he's one at of me. each of us. I can feel the Greek you. eyes coming from a <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's a couple of yeah. sets of eyes. Yeah. 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 The Italian ones and the Greek ones yeah. over there. So, um, so if you're so inclined... Mediterranean. Yeah, it's a Mediterranean yeah. connection. If you're, if, you're, if you're so inclined, Rick, I, I appreciate I, your volunteerism. I, I mean... I, oh, it's old school right there. <laughs> I, I'm struggling because I'm opposed to it, and it, it's very clear I'm opposed to it. I'm not going to change my opinion that I'm opposed to it, and I, I question whether that is doing a disservice or a service. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure in my head whether that's a good thing or not because I'm not going to change my opinion on it for, for if no other reason, the fiscal reasons I mentioned earlier. Well, you talked about uh, having a cross-section of yeah. Yeah. voting, so... Well, it would well the fact... Cross-section of stakeholders yeah. as well. The fact, the fact that you're against it, risk, uh, Rick, is actually a benefit. Okay. Because all of the reasons why you might be against it can be actually brought out in the uh, hey, MOU. Think, MOU. Of, think of it this way: you might change my mind in the process, <laughs> or vice versa, or vice versa. <laughs> all right, yeah. So, all right, me. thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, Rick and Tom will do battle, and um, we we have other individuals that the board would like to see uh, sit on this committee as well. Suggestions. We said we, we make an invite to uh, Chief Kaminsky, uh, the chief uh, from Niles. I can't pronounce his last name, so Turtle I'll Benning. leave Turtle that up Benning, there. The commander. Yeah. Um, I wrote Alderman. I want to see the middle school administrators. The, the middle, city, school administrators. So. middle school administrators. We have the uh, liaison from the uh, city council. Of, Which is Alderman Melissa. Just, um, be careful that you're distinguishing between who's a committee member and who's going to be a resource to come to the right. committee. Because the bigger your committee gets, remember, you have to have a quorum then to have a meeting. Right. Um, so if you get a 15-person stakeholder, we need to be able to coordinate schedules for, you know, close to half yeah, I don't of think them. The so chiefs, I don't think the chiefs need to be on the committee. No, that's going to make it very, it's more of a very resource. difficult to, to, to have meetings. I think we need the intergovernmental liaison from yes. Park Ridge and Niles yes. mm -hmm. both on it because they're ultimately the deci the chiefs. Well, you know, love them to death, but they're they're not making the decision on this. It's the city right. council ultimately that's doing it, and right. I think they need to be. I'd on I'd like to see committee. PTO officers, mm -hmm. maybe from the two middle schools or from any other school in <coughs> District 64. I would suggest that the PTO serve as uh, resources. Yeah. Um, so, so right now we've got uh, we're going to request that the uh, liaisons from both Niles and Park Ridge, the city, city council liaisons be on the committee, the administrators of the middle schools on the committee, board members on the committee. So that's six folks right there. We want an odd number, right? Obviously. But I we want we, an odd number. I, and then instead, would, of, instead of being a PTO officer, I would like can someone we make it a PTO designee? Because yeah, I don't. I don't think it should be an officer. I think, and, and it doesn't really have to be. A, I mean, are you talking about PTO from Lincoln and middle, uh, 
Correct. Emerson, or are you talking about PTO from our our, our younger schools? PTO from Emerson and Lincoln. Oh, yeah. I mean, th that's where they're going into, right? Right. Oh. And so, you know, so I, I view PTOs as serving a uh, in a, a vital but uh, focused function in the schools. Sure. And I think if you bring that type of body into this type of discussion, it starts to possibly morph into some sort of special interest group, and I mean not special interest group, like a lobbying group, you know, and. I don't know if we want to put them in that position. I mean, that's that's the right to be if they want to, but well, give the officers an opportunity to say, well, we don't want to get involved with that, but we'll assign someone to represent us. I think what we really need is someone from the public, right? Or well, like a, we need some parents. Hold on, hold on one second. So the issue of the PTO involvement, I think having the PTO PTAs involved as a resource certainly would be beneficial because they are part of the community. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I certainly want to hear their voice, their agreements, their disagreements, um, but they can certainly serve as a resource and they could have their own designee. We, we make an invite and they choose who they want and that individual can provide us with data and information. Mm -hmm. So there, there would be a resource to the committee, not necessarily on the committee. Right. Certainly they can show up at the committee meetings, they would be invited to those meetings, and they would have their representative there. Would they have to designate an individual, or is it just a seat? It's a, uh, there is no seat. Oh, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's a resource, not a ton of them. No, wait, didn't we six just, people right didn't, now. Didn't we, just agree, didn't we just agree that the PTO uh, is, a resource. is resource. going to be a resource, the, the chiefs are going to be a resource? Right. Do we talk about any other resources? I'm making a list here. So well, right now, can actually, I, on the committee, we need an odd number. Right, on, on the committee, we've got about one council. Two of us. We've got two city liaisons and two one, middle, one, middle school administrators. One from each school. So, so we've got six people. I, I, I think Tom, we need. I, can I just? Can, I'd like to ask yeah. Tony Louise. Yep. Just in your experience, other districts, what you've seen, are we hitting the right buckets of? types of people to be on a committee of this nature? Are we missing anything? Should we not put some of those people on? No, I, I just, again, I'll just go back to my comment to be careful about who's a committee member, and I assume this committee is going to be engaging several stakeholder groups. Yeah. It's probably part of their purpose. Right. Um, so that you just are careful about the number of people, and you want people that have, di on the committee, right, on the committee that have the time, will be able to do it, um, and have differing viewpoints, because I yes. think that's a good reason Resource. So bring, bringing that to the table, do we, f do we feel that the middle school admins need to be on the committee? Right. Or, can they, or can they be a resource as well? Because really they're, they're, they're a resource. They're, you know, they're not, I don't know if we want our admins making those, you know. I, this, this is kind of why I was getting at the point that, that you, you might want some time to think about right. this. We're representing the schools. Um, well, this is, you know, I we mean, can't, you've established... But we, can't, but we can't think about it when we're not together, so this no, is a really good opportunity. You can think, think about it, and you can send your suggestions to the superintendent, and then you can have this discussion again right. on uh, the 25th. Um, right now, it sounds like what we're doing is brainstorming, yes. um, and maybe people don't even... I even would probably, probably want some time to think about this, and actually look and see if there's other models out there. Um, so I, I appreciate this dialogue, but at the end of the day, you're probably not going to be able to nail this down until a future. The one thing that is missing. So the one thing that is missing. And is, you have to ask these people. The one thing that is missing is is uh, uh, stakeholder uh, res residents. Uh, that's not on this list. So somehow, while we're thinking until the 25th, please all of you think about how we're going to incorporate somebody from. Well, we would have we, we, the way we've done it is for other things. We would put, let's say, filling a seat on the board. We put out a statement, we invite applications, people would submit their name, a small paragraph as to why they want to be on it, and then the board will pick two individuals, three individuals, and, and those individuals will sit on the committee. That's exactly how we've done it before, and I think it's the appropriate way to do it. I, I agree. That's, that's, that, number. that's the, the best practice of how yes. to do that. So, um, really, going forward now, so we, we've had a bit of a discussion. Um, you're probably right. I mean, we should think about this. I would suggest that all of us, uh, me included, I mean, compile a list of individuals who would like to see on the committee as a resource, uh, submit them to Dr. Heinz, because I, one further comment, I think that Dr. Heinz should be integral on this committee as well. And, and couple that with some of the folks in the community 
so that this is a relatively manageable thing. And then when we come back on the 25th, we can decide if the middle school principals should actually be on the committee or be a resource. Uh, and, and more importantly, we have to decide how many folks from the community would like to be on the committee. Is it two? Uh, we, we do need to have an odd number, so. Yeah. And, and we, typically people that are going to be appointed to these committees want want details. They want to know how much time they're going to be committing, when you're going to be meeting, what is expected out of them. Right. So before you usually ask these people, we try to get that stuff in line so they they understand what they're accepting. Right. And that, that'll go out in the invitation, obviously. Yeah. Sure. So uh, is everybody comfortable with that or anybody would like to add anything to that? So I guess I guess we have uh, an idea to go forward. We do. So well, everybody, if it's yes. Okay with you, is I'll write this up. I'll revisit the, the tape, kind of write it up, so we're clear on what we're asking about. Right. It'll go out to all of you. You can send me your ideas, and then I will formulate an invitation. Float that past in an upcoming memo. See if it includes everything we needed to, <coughs> and then we'll push it up. Exactly. And then mm -hmm. and then we can take formal vote on on this process. On now, the 25th. Do you want it in June or the meeting in July? No, the June meeting. June 25th? Okay. Yeah, we'll just so add here's it the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other comments? Did we hit all the high points? I think you, yeah. Okay. All right. Except for any other comments by any of the board members? Not uh, hearing any. <coughs> Uh, our next meeting is on June 25th. We, we were, we were going to entertain yeah. comments from the public. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Since we didn't have much of a discussion, I thought you know, we wouldn't need that. But uh, if there is anybody who would like to make comments on this issue, uh, that, that was offered. So please, come up to the podium. Can I, know. I, can I ask permission yes. to be accepted? Okay, thank yeah. you guys very much. Safe, Thanks, safe drive, drive safely. Thank, thank you very much. much. Overruled. I've always wanted to say that to a lawyer, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Drive carefully. It's okay. No, 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 no. Find the speed limit, Tony. Okay. Hi. Hi. So, by the way, the chief of Niles is Chief Tigera, not Commander Tornabeni, just so you guys know. Okay. Uh, my name is Tracy Fergasi. I've grown up in District 64. I attended Roosevelt, Lincoln, and Maine South. Some of you look a little familiar. Uh, my kids are right now in fifth grade and third grade at field school, and I am hoping this SRO program will be in place before my son enters Emerson. I'm actually hoping we can get this passed so the proper training can even get done before the start of the next school year. Obviously, that might not happen. From what I understand, the Park Ridge Police Department does not have a trained SRO, although Maine South has always had an SRO in their school, even since I attended many, many years ago. I won't say when. Little background of my experience, I've taught sixth grade in District 63 for 18 years now. I have a master's degree in curriculum and instruction. I am the teacher at my school that co-teaches with the resource teacher each year. And I have at least six to seven of my 27 to 28 students every year in my class that have disabilities, mild to severe, autistic to behavioral, to learning disabilities. Our district does almost total inclusion. We have barely any one-on-one -on -one aids and have not for over six years. I'm also PROACT trained, which is a training that hospital workers also get. The PROACT curriculum builds a framework of principles that guide critical thinking and establishes parameters within which to problem solve. These principles incorporate issues of de-escalation, teamwork, risk assessment, and crisis communication into a frame framework for decision making. We also have a restraint team, which is an end result if needed in cases of severe behavior in which the de-escalation did not work. And I work with all disabilities within my classroom and have almost 100% inclusion. And schools like these and our school does not call in the SRO to deal with these issues with students that have special needs like this. Um, I do see fellow coworkers in 63 who can agree to that. Um, and so I want to start by saying that the SRO program is not a new idea. It is not here because of current gun violence issues in schools. 18 years ago when I started teaching in District 63, our junior high, Gemini, had a full-time SRO. 
Back then, District 64 only had Lincoln, and it was not a middle school. We followed the junior high model, 7th and 8th grade only. District 63 actually had a full-time SRO office at the junior high 18 years ago, and the officer then was Bob Tornabeni, now a commander in the Niles Police Department. Uh, since then, District 63 has had Officer Lawley and Officer April May. And I run into past students, adults now, all the time, and their first question to me is, hey, how's Officer Bob? These SROs have had nothing but a positive impact on all of our students at District 63. Noe Hernandez has since taken this place. When Commander Tornabeni was the SRO, his relationship with all of the students was tremendous and so important, especially students with special needs. There was this line of respect and feeling of safety among all. And I see it every day, the bullying and the rise of not taking ownership of your own behavior. And not just simple bullying, but actual fear that students have to even go to school. And this extra support that Officer Hernandez can give to our students and staff is unbelievable, and I truly cannot and will not understand the fight against this amazing resource that the community has to offer. I have worked closely with Officer Hernandez, and I have had him come in to speak to my sixth graders several times this year and in the past. I also know that parents of Emerson students are consistently calling the police department for help and support. I know this because I have talked to many frustrated parents. To have an SRO to solely deal with these issues and to be a liaison between the school, parents, and the police department is such an asset. An SRO does not deal with or change the way a school deals with disciplinary items. He is there for support and not to make arrests and go into a school excuse me, guns flaring and handcuffs ready. In 18 years, I have seen just the extreme opposite. Let's teach our kids to respect teachers and the police and know that we are there for them and everything we do, we do for them. Our teachers and administration need this support. Maybe we should start FOIA, the reports Officer Hernandez has taken in the last few years. I would also like to add that certain people who are not just questioning this issue and other issues, but they are also disrespecting other parents who do not feel the same way as them. Sorry, I am a bit off the point here, but I do not and I will never say, as others have, that I am the majority or that I speak for all, but I have spoken to many parents with students of all ages, and all that I have spoken to are for the SRO program. This is not a fight on who is right or wrong. This is about doing what is right for our students. I have started a petition only in the last two days, just got back from a wake out of funeral out of town, um, and so, and I am determined to show the board that there are many, many parents who are for the SRO program to be at Emerson, just like I am. I have asked for many parents who could not come to the meeting this evening to please write letters to the board and also give me a copy. And I truly thank the few that are posting on Facebook. You have taught me the importance of getting involved. Um, I started a petition 48 hours ago. We have 80 signatures, many letters to the board um, in support of this program, and I am willing to keep on going however many you need, 400, 500, whatever it takes, but it is ridiculous that, our SR, that we do not have an SRO program, and the, all of the surrounding districts have them. It is just ridiculous. So that is me saying my piece, and I have all the signatures, but we will continue on with them Thank you. throughout this summer. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. So Deb before, yeah, before, before we get started, I know that we have a three minute time limit, and I'm certainly gonna be very liberal with that tonight because I think it's okay. important that everybody have their comments. Uh, but if you could be mindful of that. I will I be, it. absolutely. So um, I'm happy that S District 63 is so inclusive and has such a great SPED program. Right now, you know we do not. And the issues so that the naysayers, get, excuse me, I get to speak. Okay, Dr. Hines, you can speak no, after. Debbie Lovett, so I, I have five children. Three have uh, graduated from Maine South. 
Two are in Lincoln, both of them are in CFC, and one of them has an IEP. So when our special ed program is as strong as it needs to be, and the administrators and the staff and everyone is clued in on exactly what special needs students need, then an SRO program, program will be wonderful. At this stage, when we have kids at Lincoln who have been handcuffed outside of school property, but due to things that happened on school property, we are showing a concern. So it's not that we're naysayers who are just trying to stop something from ever happening. I believe you that you've put in so many hours into this program. I don't want those hours washed away. We want it improved. So I love that Tom said, let's look at this thing. Let's really craft it. Let's really do it. And then you can bring an SRO program that we can all embrace. We're not just saying, do not do it. I don't want you to feel that way. What we're saying is that there is a big fear that if you bring it in, you just it would be very simple to say, it's just a pilot program. We're just trying this out. Well, you know what? Try it with the best intention. I love that you said, let's do the whatever those letters are, the MOU, the whatever, whatever you need to do to do it right. I love that you said, get Dr. Hines on that committee. That was my comment. If, if in fact you were voting to push it through, you're right, I was misunderstanding that. I was just saying, please talk to Dr. Hines. She's an incredible, incredible resource. The last place she was at, there were 17 schools. Some of them had students that had ankle bracelets on and needed police liaison, right? Get her input, please. And when our SPED program is stronger, you will have much more people embracing this. However, even before that, if in fact you strengthen your own resolve, which we've heard, I will be so supportive of a program that's been looked into, that's been researched, that isn't just the sunk cost fallacy of we've put so much time into this, let's just go forward, then you'll get our support. And I hope that we can all say, just like she says with District 63, that District 64 has that same thing. That's what I hope. Thank you. I'm Janessa Nichols. Um, I also have uh, three students, all with um, various disabilities, um, some behavioral, and I also I want to speak a little bit about um, how this impacts um, kids with uh, special kids with special needs um, and, and and actually it's in combination of Larry and Tom some of your points and um, Rick's so first in regards to this is a pilot program um, when we are doing a pilot program especially with kids we need to consider the diverse needs and experiences that the, these kids have had um, we don't know where all these kids are coming from we don't know their backgrounds we don't know what's going on behind closed doors we don't know what trauma they've had in their lives we don't know what their specific disabilities are medical biological um, you know environmental whatever that might be there are a lot of factors and to say that oh let's just try this out and use our kids as you know these um, you know, just piloting a program, you know, at the expense of these children, some who have already had enough trauma in their lives, it's not an option, period, it's not an option. Um, I am, you know, very grateful for um, those of you who have, you know, put on the brakes and stopped this, or, you know, at least stopped to, um, you know, reconsider a lot of these, um, issues because I do think that you have done a lot to gather a lot more information but it's still it's stopped short um, and my most salient concerns are where these um, you know the the identified issues with special ed meet 
these issues with the SRO. Um, so one of my concerns, and I know I've brought this to you guys before, is um, if there's been consultation with the um, special ed director, whether it's been with Mike as an interim director, with Dr. Frost, um, I had like within this whole discussion, there neither of them have their names, you know, came up. Why is their input not, you know, seeked for this? In addition, what about our school psychologists? We have school counselors, we have school psychologists, and you know, to be quite honest with you, they're in with the kids. They're the kids' allies. It's not, well, I mean, the teachers are great too, but they, the, our kids go to those counselors who have their backs. They can go and complain about us parents. They can go and complain about their teachers. They know the kids. And so they also have, you know, the academic, background, they've got at least a master's degree, a, a doctorate's degree, plus hours and hours and hours of training. I don't understand why the SPED director and the psychologist have not been consulted. Um, Tom asked um, if there has been uh, specialized training related to children with disabilities for SROs, and Dr. Hines um, said she didn't know if any exist. This is an example of why they should be consulted, because in fact, there are a lot. Um, you're in a prominent position, and people are going to accept what you say. And so it's, you know, it's, frankly, it's just irresponsible. I mean, we can't, it, this is not a financial decision. This is on our kids' experiences. Um, okay. I also want to say something about the discipline, or the behaviors of kids. Uh, <laughs> So there are, well here, I'll, I'll keep it in point. Um, right, we've identified a lot of issues with um, our special ed program, and you guys know it, I'm not gonna go over it. Um, but considering these issues, um, and the decline in services, and namely like the, the failure to identify the kids, and I wanna be clear on Special ed does not just mean what we can see or trouble learning. Um, the disabilities can be behavioral and emotional. Um, and so a lot of these kids aren't identified. And the definition of special ed students is also very unclear. Um, so there's a lot of kids walking around our schools that may not have an IEP or a 504, and they may have these invisible uh, disabilities or conditions, and these are the kids that can presumably um, not be included in these procedural you know, safeguards that are, well, I mean, arguably not even in this agreement. Um, these kids fall through the cracks. And children with, whose behaviors are a manifestation of their disabilities are not children who purposely and deliberately act out. Yes, they're responsible for their behaviors, but they're not choosing to be aggressive or to be problematic any more than a child who can't read is choosing to be dyslexic. And yeah, it's hard to understand that and it's hard to deal with that. As a mother, I'll tell you on a daily basis, I forget that. So I'm not saying that as to like say I am, uh, you know, preemptively saying that an SRO will 
um, you know, have any malintent. Saying that as somebody who experiences this on a daily basis, it is very easy to go there and to think that your kid's just a brat. And the bigger your kid gets, the harder it is. Um, this also holds true for typical kids too. When there's problems with behaviors, there's an underlying problem. They're behaving because there's something wrong, which is why, to Rick's point, psychologists, counselors are so important. If they can come in and they can make a relationship with these kids and they can do some preventative work and they can do some interventions, you don't need that reactive and you know, potentially punitive um, issues. So, um, let's see. So if you can summarize now. Um, okay, my last one is, um, you know, even, so my concern is these kids who may or may not have been identified mm -hmm. with special, as special needs for special ed kids. Um, having IEPs, and I'm referring to this as like if they, the SRO will now go to ask the director if they can be involved. Um, the kids who are identified with 504s or IEPs, are they going to wear scarlet letter? So they are identified, so the SRO knows, wait, let me go ask. That's a question. It, this is your retort, there, there's no rebuttal. Oh, okay. I would just like to know the practicality of it. When you guys are, are when you're thinking and you're making these decisions and writing out, you know, your safeguards, you know, these stringent safeguards and guidelines and the operations and behaviors for the SRO. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that 11-year-old kid, that 13-year-old kid. How do you know which kid has fetal alcohol syndrome? How do you know which kid has, is autistic? How do you know which kid has a neurological disorder? My name is Roisin Hamilton. I have um, two kids in District 64. Um, I missed a little bit of the meeting. I had to run to baseball, the black eyes, baseball mom injury. Um, and I know my time's limited, but I just wanted to jump right in um, because SRO is a topic that has me very concerned. I want you guys to ask yourself a few questions. Is an SRO for eight hours a week in our middle schools really what the taxpayers and parents have elected you to provide? Is this going to provide a real solution to issues that District 64 is facing? Is this pilot going to have a measurable bar to determine success or failure? And finally, could these funds be put to better use in other ways and still accomplish the same objective minus the officer-friendly aspect? This past Monday night, Chief Kaminsky told the council that the SRO is not to be used for discipline, but to improve the relationship between the youth of our town and the police. There has to be a better and more cost-effective way to accomplish this goal with the same amount of funding or less. Many of you ran for your positions on platforms that included fiscal responsibility. Is a budget item that calls for an SRO for eight hours a week truly a fiscally responsible approach to addressing problems in our schools, or does it give the highest profile of appearance of action by the board and staff? Another interesting comment from Chief Kaminsky last Monday was that the Park Ridge Police Department is currently understaffed and overtime shifts would be needed to fund the backfill of officers who are assigned to SRO duties. Is the overtime cost calculated into your agreement or is the city going to absorb this cost? Either way, the overtime bill still comes up to the taxpayers. Not very fiscally conservative in my opinion. I'm not here tonight because I'm anti-police or even because I don't want an armed officer in a school with my children. If this was about safety and security, I would probably be on board. However, as these conversations have developed, it seems that those are not the goals. 
as well, I want you to consider the liability aspect. Like Tom brought up before, the city getting involved would bring up an issue of whether there was a lawsuit with an SRO, would the city be responsible? Either way, I think it comes up to the taxpayers and you guys have a responsibility. I also want you to consider that um, if you do move forward with the IGA, maybe you can get the city to sign off on all uh, liability and you guys as a board could absorb all the liability. And that's it, thank you. Hi, Ginger Pennington. I prepared my comments tonight, so it won't take that long. It should be three minutes. Um, all right, so the board has belabored this SRO program for many months, as we're all aware. I can feel that everyone's weary. I know I am, the attorneys, everyone now sitting up here. Okay, I, but I want to be clear, this is not the fault of a handful of irritating and irrational parents, right? In my opinion, and the opinion of many parents, it's the fault of the administration who's repeatedly failed to follow best practices, refused to involve parents. I'm very pleased to hear tonight, finally, a year into this, that you're talking about doing an MOU and getting stakeholder input. That, is supposed to be done first. I think it's pretty obvious. But um, anyway, it's not just a few of us. There are over 100 people signed a petition against, or not against the SRO, but saying we wanted it done differently last fall and we were ignored. Okay. So, you know, it's not just an issue of two or three parents throwing roadblocks up against this otherwise stellar, well thought out program. Okay. So it's been nearly a year and you're not, you're just sitting here, you're not all on the same page about the program's purpose. You know, or, or already today we've heard, you know, Larry said, you know, that. There's things that we have to do as a school board right now, and SRO is one of them. Why? What is the need? You haven't demonstrated any need. You know, Tom Soto said it doesn't matter if it costs a bazillion dollars, if it's about the safety of our kids, it's worth it. I thought it wasn't about safety. He's going to be there a couple hours a week. How is that protecting our kids from a threat? So, you know, and it, there's no agreement. The chief um, spoke to the city council on Monday. His goals for the program don't align with many of the ones we've heard from you. Okay, so this is a serious problem. And it tells us that no matter how many months you have been working on this, which are a lot, the work clearly isn't done. Um, and it hasn't been done well, frankly. Now, as a professor, I sometimes have a student fail an exam only to complain about this large number of hours they spent studying. And I'll tell you the same thing I tell them. It's not about the time of t the amount of time you spend on the work. It's about the quality of the work. Okay. So, you know, we know through emails obtained through FOIA that there's been this rush to get it started because you want to start, if there's not training now, it can't start in uh, August, but it sounds like that might not be an issue if we're going to continue with an MOU, which I'm pleased we're going to do. Um, but I want to reiterate one thing, which is key to this best practices is in plans for data collection and program evaluation. And not just lip service, but well-constructed, valid, research methodology okay so that still has not been adopted by this board the consulting law firm asked you to do it the parents asked you to do this Department of Justice Department of Education NASRO standards call for you to do this okay so why you have refused to up until this point is a mystery to me um, and I think parents deserve an explanation for that it's not in the best interest of families not to do so and for those of you on the board who mentioned last month that you know it's okay we don't need to include it in agreement because you know it'll be done later and posted on the web Site. All right, I'm curious how you would feel about the following quote from an email that was between the district and the police department, um, and Lori, Dr. Hines was copied on. It says, in response to your question concerning data collection, the district believes an activity log required in Exhibit B will suffice for the pilot year. Okay. It made very clear in that email that the district has no intentions to do data collection beyond, beyond this log. All right. Now, you know, this, an activity log is not sufficient, okay? Not if you truly plan to carry out a strong program. Not if you intend this to serve as a pilot to assess its value. Um, so this email confirms parents' fears that the administration doesn't really actually plan to do this well and thoughtfully and properly. Tonight, I'm starting to feel some hope that, you know, that's going to be done. Although it concerns me that um, Mr. Soto's used the word jumping through hoops. If we're gonna do the MOU and jump through hoops. It's not jumping through hoops. I don't want you to give lip, ser lip service to parents' concerns. I want you to understand that there is validity in them and actually come to the table and fix this. Okay, so anyway, from what we've seen over the last year, we've lost a lot of trust. We don't feel that the board's been invested in doing the right thing. You know, each improvement we've made to the IGA, the IGA that you started with was terrible. I mean, terrible. There were, there were, you, there were no officer training requirements at all. And you guys were ready to vote on that. 
um, until things that started blowing up. So, you know, but every change we've made, which I'm glad are in there, but it's required parents to badger, petition, write letters, post on social media, attend countless adversarial meetings. It shouldn't be adversarial. This shouldn't be necessary. We should have done the MOU first. Okay, so what I, most probably the most important thing I want to say tonight is that I'm urging the administration and the board to reconsider how you handle these types of situations moving forward. You know, it did not need to be this adversarial. So the solution is not, as Chairman Borelli seems to have suggested last month, that we need to return to a board policy of preventing the public from seeing any documents until the night before they're voted upon. Okay, that actually is just what got us into this, this mess in the first place. So rather than trying to just shut the public up, I would say the solution is to seek community input when the policies are formed. And so they can be stronger. You know, it's not just about tanking this program. From the beginning, when George and I first started coming to these meetings last fall, we didn't say, you know, we gave you, prob you know, reasons based on research why it might be a bad, poor idea, but at the same time, we tried to work with you and say, this is how we can make it better, and we were ignored, largely speaking. So involve parents so they can be stronger. So you can have community buy-in from the get-go. The program's gonna be more successful if you have community buy-in. You know, we heard from a speaker earlier today, there are parents out there that are for it, and I understand that. Um, we should hear from everyone. So far, we've heard from no one other than the people that you know have been motivated to come out. Okay, so to conclude, you know, personally, I feel the SRO program is a bad idea. Um, I recognize there's anecdotal evidence. Some people have really loved it. It's been good in this situation or that situation. I care about evidence, and I care about research evidence. And the research evidence does not give any strong indication that there's these meaningful benefits that outweigh the risks. All right, so you know, in my opinion, it's not a good idea. But the cost-benefit analysis doesn't add, particularly given as we've mentioned all these other costs that the district are facing that are much more important, if you ask me, to the general education and sped special education students' well-being and the strength of our schools. There is no need for this program, in my opinion. You haven't convinced us there is. All right, so by doing this, you're putting our most vulnerable students at risk unnecessarily, and as a community, I think we deserve evidence-based policies. Okay, so that said, if the program is to proceed, it should be done right, as i you know, glad that Tom has mentioned. So best practices are best practices for a reason. Okay, so trying to do all you can to thwart them and sidestep them is a recipe for failure and it's a disservice to our children and our community. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carol Salas. Um, I just want to give a brief overview of points based on um, discussions among certain concerned parents. Um, it includes research and the ECHL report. Um, so not all parents who wish to address the board about the SRO program have the exact same goals. Some parents, as you've seen, are completely against the idea. Others are very supportive. Um, and others have varied and serious concerns that they want addressed. And it's not just the oversimplified concern that they're concerned that it's going to be a school-to-prison pipeline. That's not it at all. There are more substantive concerns than that. Um, so parents share the goal of making sure that um, any program plans are well thought out based on solid information and implemented fairly and transparently. Um, we would like ad the administration and board um, to not sweep these concerns under the rug or push them away for another day, which it sounds like you're not doing after you know today's discussions and creating the committee, so that is progress. Um, so it's our goal to make sure that our concerns are heard, documented, and taken seriously for the benefit of the students in the district. Um, these concerns are organized into the following seven categories or key issue areas. Um, and they are SRO involvement in discipline, uh, communication with families and the community on this program, training concerns, inadequate plans for the ongoing management of the program, process failures, resource allocation issues, and liability. And I know a couple of these were just recently touched upon by other parents, but I'll sp uh, speak briefly um, about resource allocation and liability. So um, the Park Ridge Police Department has been short-staffed with officers working significant overtime. Um, on Monday, the chief said that if all goes well, we will be fully staffed. So the plan is to use other officers to work overtime to backfill the hours used by the SRO on school duties. So one issue is whether this is in the best use of the officer's limited resources, especially when both Niles and Park Ridge police are already 
um, very successful with and heavily invested in um, their community building and community engagement activities. Um, another issue is what will happen in Park, um, if, if Park Ridge's hiring objectives are not achieved or if the high turnover rate continues. So will this put a further strain on the department or affect performance? Um, and you heard from a parent earlier about possible liability issues. So liability concerns are significant and could have a large impact on the district financially. For example, in between 2012 and 2016, um, CPS SROs were the cause of a quarter of a million dollars in misconduct settlements. And as the ECHL report emphasizes, there's a lack of clarity with respect to students' civil rights that exposes the district to litigation. Um, the report advised the district to err on the side of caution and afford more protective rights to students to minimize the litigation risks. That's all. Thanks. Hello, uh, my name is Rachel Nash. I have uh, one child at field and another one in preschool to ultimately go to field. Um, I wanna say first off, thank you for all the time and energy that you have put into this board and on this issue. Um, I know that it's taken a lot of effort on your part, a lot of frustration, um, a lot of strain, and I know that we're just trying to build the best learning environment for our kids. So I appreciate your hard work. With that said though, um, I have, this is my first meeting here, I've never been to one of these meetings before, um, but after hearing um, parents talk and talk about this issue, um, I'm also serving on the Social Emotional Learning Committee. Um, I heard about this, this possible opportunity and I was surprised and shocked that it's been taking nine months to discuss this. Um, given what um, I've learned about it, I am certainly um, opposed to the SRO and I appreciate that you are willing to take a longer look at this and dive down to some of these details that I think are very important. Um, as you are reviewing the mission and these documents, IGA, what have you, I don't know all these, um, all the acronyms for it. I just want to um, reiterate that it's important um, for ongoing management of this program as you revisit this, that teachers and staff should be formally educated and trained in the role of the SRO, and standard operating procedures should be clearly documented and distributed. There needs to be a mutual understanding of the responsibilities and specific limitations. All school staff need to be trained um, not to call on SROs to address non-violent or non-threatening behavior. And absent and a real immediate threat, staff should not ask an SRO to be present or participate in the questioning of a student that could expose a student to a court, invol um, a court involvement or arrest. Um, also, I want to suggest that there should be a plan for how to teach and inform students about the reason for police presence in the school prior to the SRO in introduction, if and when that happens. Um, finally, um, program management needs uh, plans need to include monthly meetings and a clear plan for coordination with school guidance counselors, psychologists, and social workers. I think research on the program is clear that programs are more likely to be successful with close collaboration between these parties. But in order for this program to be properly assessed um, and improved upon, data must be collected. I've, I've worked for the University of Chicago for over 10 years. I understand the importance of data. Um, and as, in, as stated in the ECHL report, um, uniformly across the studies and commentaries on the subject of SROs, data collection is accepted as a necessity. For obvious reasons, the district needs to have a robust and continuing system for the collection of relevant data. Um, there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of suggestions on how to get that data, but it's, it's important that we do that. I don't care how much. You say um, it could take millions of dollars for this program. Well, whatever it takes to make sure that if and when we have this pilot program, that the accurate data is collected. Um, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that should be a number one thing. Um, and lastly, when it comes to training, sorry, I have some notes here. I just wanted to mention, to please, as you're reviewing and reassessing, um, that to appropriately look um, at these cops, um, not uh, to, to make sure the SROs are not appropriately trained for them to play as an informal counselor or advisor. I think it's important that we provide a safe environment for our students to discuss at-risk behaviors, and we'll consult with admin staff on strategies for dealing with behavioral at-risk students. 
Obviously, officers do not have the appropriate training in child psychology and behavior modification to conduct these duties. That's the role of psychologists and social workers. In addition to the serious risk of uh, giving poor advice, SROs expose themselves to liability by practicing psychological counseling without a license. Despite good intentions, it's potentially problematic for SROs to get involved. Parents urge the district to review proposed legislation here in Illinois that would allow schools to apply to an optional grant. As, as I summarize, um, common sense dictates that if a part-time officer traveling in and out of our schools um, would have limited benefit. If we are concerned with the emotional well-being of our kids, um, investing in trained social workers or mental health professionals make more sense to me. Thank you for your time. I'm Anita Whiney. I'm a D64 parent and a resident of Park Ridge. I'm against the SRO program in the middle schools for many of the reasons articulated over the last six months. Um, I've actually only heard people who are against this except for tonight. So this is the first time I've ever heard anyone that's articulated why they're for this. We're all in agreement, though, that we want to keep our kids safe. But we need to look at the facts to make the best decisions for our schools. Even though the ECHL report commissioned by the board for $15,000 states clearly that there are no measurable benefits of having a uniformed officer with a gun patrolling the school, there continues to be discussion about moving forward with the pilot program. Why is the board ignoring these expert recommendations? And I do think they're expert because there's research behind them. It's not just an opinion. And why, is the board be, have, why have they been dismissive of parental concerns? Because I do feel that's been going on at the meetings I've attended. In our district's efforts to improve social emotional learning, school funds would best be spent on teachers, counselors, and social workers. Studies show that an SRO program in middle school may interfere with these efforts. Let's focus our resources on social emotional learning by our dedicated teaching professionals. The teachers in our middle schools are highly educated. The police chief indicated that he has many open positions on his force that he hasn't been able to fill, even if he were able to find the best police officers for the SROs. Do we really believe that they can compare to the education and skills of the teachers that have devoted their lives to teaching our children? especially when the board has already admitted that they will not adhere to the best practices recommendations of the ECHL report. Only eight hours per week with minimal training. Periodic visits by police officers should continue as is current practice to foster a trust with the police. I highly believe in that. But officers should only be called when there is an active threat. If the decision is made to move forward with the pilot program, even with all these months of vocal opposition, I'm very much behind the parental advisory committee. Um, but I, I actually have called it a parental advisory committee because I think it's so important to have more than just one or two parents on this committee. I think, as you heard tonight, the parents are the ones that are going to be affected by this decision. And you need to have as many parents um, on this committee, but they shouldn't be selected by the board, not handpicked by the board. They should be on a volunteer basis from the parents that have become the most knowledgeable on the sub subject, many of them here tonight. So the SRO is just one of the many security measures considered in the wake of increasing gun violence in the schools. I know that's how the discussion even got started. Others include increased building security, lockdown drills, and secured vestibules. However, we're ignoring the most basic security measures that can be taken at home, preventing kids' access to guns. Illinois is one of 14 states with the negligent storage law that make gun-owning parents criminally liable for crimes committed by their children with those guns. On April 20th, I sent an email to Superintendent Hines saying, in honor of today's student walkout to protest gun violence, would you be able to send a quick message to all parents in D64 to remember to keep firearms locked and out of reach of children? 
both in their homes and in their caregivers? I received no response. That's disturbing because it looks like the sensitivities of gun owners are more important than the safety of our children, as well as teachers. Less than a month after I sent my request, a troubled student in Santa Fe, Texas, used his parents' guns to commit the latest mass shooting at his school. At the press conference after the shooting, even the Lieutenant Governor of Texas said that parents need to keep guns locked and out of reach of children in Texas. Thus, I ask again, why can't D64 in Park Ridge, Illinois, send periodic reminders to children to keep firearms locked and out of reach from children? How about sending out this reminder the same time that the schools have lockdown drills? This should also become a part of the police department's community outreach. D64 and the police department can do more to keep our kids safe through periodic reminders to keep firearms locked than the entire SRO program. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kristen Olson, parent of a proud parent of a field phoenix. I'm also a member of uh, the Park Ridge Search Program, so I work with the police a lot, which is have highest respect for them. Um, I'm really undecided on this program because I don't feel like I understand what you are pitching in this program. Um, I'm asking the board to clarify the extent to which the program is intended to address student behavior problems. Uh, there were some meeting minutes on August 28th about um, from Dr. Hines saying that SROs would become an extension of the district's administrative staff in responding to day-to-day -to -day behavior concerns, but even the adoption of a mission statement doesn't seem to have everybody on the same page. As recently as last week, members of the board had told parents that they supported the program because they believe in the need for more discipline in our schools. Well, don't we all, but um, quotes such as, we have a discipline issue, which is why I support SRO, and these kids need some authority recorrection, um, kind of percolating in the minds of the board, it seems. And it doesn't seem to be consistent with what an SRO officer is supposed to do, according to um, a document created by the NASRO and the National Association of Psychology. Um, utilizing SROs or other security personnel primarily as substitutes for effective discipline policies is inappropriate and does not contribute to school safety or students' perceptions of being safe. So I think clarifying what we're, what the point of an SRO is will go a long way. Also, is eight hours a week uh, rotating officers? I understand it won't even be able to be a dedicated officer. How is that going to make students feel safer? How are students going to build trust with officers who are kind of coming and going. I think it takes a long time to develop that kind of relationship. Um, also, there's a real racial disparity in which children are disciplined. Children of color are much more likely to receive harsher, harsher disciplines than white children for the same problems in schools. So we need to make sure that we're fair for all of our children. Thank you. John Murphy. I'm a, a parent. I live in Niles and I just moved from Park Ridge. Um, I'll make it uh, simple and clear. I don't believe the SRO should have anything at all to do with the discipline of the children. Uh, we fund and adequately resource and train, have enough school personnel to properly handle any kind of discipline. And so I'm um, I just, I generally am not in favor of an SRO, but if there is one, it needs to be extremely clear firewall uh, stopping the administration from using not just an any special ed kid, but any child who's irritating or a constant behavior problem, not to resort to pulling in the SRO. Um, from what I've heard about uh, Niles and Park Ridge are inadequately staffed as far as the police department. Uh, there should, they should have no business being a police officer on a part-time basis, cycling in and out, who does not have the, who's exhausted and doesn't have the training. Um, so that's the other thing. 
You know, the other thing is, um, my son, who's 13, was told by a Hispanic child, um, his friend, don't ever look at a police officer in the eye. I was told that. I was told by my parents because they could come arrest you. Uh, I don't know what the document, uh, doc whether this kid is documented or not. It's not relevant to me. But that's a factor. And I echo the other lady was saying, uh, people of color, undocumented children. It's a fear factor. So, but my main point is, I want, I would, if their SRO has a program, if we're going forward, there's absolutely should be no discipline allowed by the principal special ed director at all or for any child. Thank you. Hi, I'm Greg Bublitz. Uh, I'm live at 1021 Kent and have three stu uh, students, children, at Washington School. Um, I'm actually the director of special services for the last six years in District 63, so thank you, Tracy. Uh, and my point is not to say no to an SRO, but to be sure that things are being done appropriately, are data informed, and so I appreciate some of the efforts here. And I want to say about Tracy, she deals with some of the most difficult children in District 63 and probably if you added 64. She and her colleagues in that school have received significant training that most teachers do not, way beyond what typical, even typical special ed teachers do. We've made that a consistent effort and uh, priority. So in addition to everything else she said, that's something that um, has been echoed throughout the night. But I have a couple points about uh, discipline as well. So considering the risk of children being exposed to legal risk or criminal action due to the presence of a law enforcement officer in our middle schools. Uh, for example, I do not think the SRO should issue tickets to students in school barring unusual circumstances. And is the language in the IGA sufficient to prevent this? The SROs at our high schools in Park Ridge issued at least 38 tickets to kids in school this year for smoking or vaping. That seems like a discipline issue that the school should address during school hours, not the police. If your intention is truly not to ticket 12 or 13 year old kids for having an e-cigarette in their backpack, I believe that language should be in the IGA to make that 100% clear and give parents peace of mind. Secondly, the IGA allows the SRO to question students and be involved in discipline, so long as his or her involvement is approved by the principal. Is this a sufficient safeguard? Are parents really in support of wanting law enforcement officers to be involved in school discipline at the principal's sole discretion? As long as the principal says it's okay, SRO can search, interrogate, detain, etc. This can be done without parents first being notified. This opens minors up to legal problems that could have a serious impact on the rest of their lives. Children do and say dumb things, especially when angry or scared. It's one thing to act that way in front of a teacher or principal, quite another um, to do that in front of a police officer. This year alone, SROs in 207, Park Ridge Niles have ticketed those 38 kids. These are real and valid concerns. Um, and even in a case where a child is completely innocent of wrongdoing, being questioned by a uniformed police officer can be quite frightening and upsetting, uh, as we saw in the Naperville case, and it can have tragic consequences. One more point, in complications involving SRO interactions with special ed students, particularly those with behavioral needs. This is still a concern. Despite provisions to involve the SPED director in cases involving discipline, it is clear that the SRO will not always be immediately aware of student status when intervening in an immediate behavioral manner. Um, as a special ed director, I can tell you, you, you will not ever know if that child has an IEP or not. Um, but they do have behaviors and problems that even the staff do not know about, and it can be escalated very quickly. Um, communications revealed in the FOIA request highlight the uncertainties and blurred lines that complicate proper handling of these issues by police. Quote from an email from P Park Ridge 
Police Department attorney to the District 64 attorney on March 26, quote, the way this IGA is written, it appears that the SRO is entirely hands-off in all situations involving special ed students. I assume that is not what was intended. Can you clarify what this new language means so the city understands the restrictions? Is this just disciplinary meetings or something more? Um, input from special ed professionals would be helpful here. The program should not be approved without review and input from our new director, Dr. Frost. Um, this issue is too critical to be glossed over in an effort to implement the program by August. Uh, and one last piece. I'm sure. Notes. All right. So in talking about training as well, and I talked a little bit about teacher training, but parents believe that hiring decisions should include consideration of the officer's past discipline history, and that decisions to proceed with an SRO program should take into consideration staffing and culture concerns at the police departments. The IGA states that the SRO cannot be on probation, but it doesn't prevent an officer with problematic history of suspensions or disciplinary action from being selected. Public documents show that individuals selected for SRO duties uh, in 207 and past have histories of disciplinary action, suspension for misconduct and arrest. The wor this is worrisome for District 64 parents. The IGA in 207 requires no record keeping and no district complaint process. Um, our current IGA draft has the same deficiencies. As a result, community members and parents have no valid way of determining whether concerning incidents have occurred and how successful the program has been in meeting those goals. The chief plays an important role in the selection of the SRO. In Park Ridge, our police department has been understaffed, this has been well documented tonight, and struggling to improve police community relationships for some time. Um, we do not want to dwell on the past as parents, but a number of troubling in incidents in our own department's history are hard to ignore. This is the widely publicized case in 2006 where the police commander was charged with aggravated battery after beating up two local teenagers who had thrown rocks at his car. Uh, earlier, a police lieutenant pulled his gun on a 12 and 13 year old who were climbing a fence at Main South football field and he ordered them to lie face down on the ground. Um, an audit of the Park Ridge Police Department conducted in 2008 was highly critical, specifically recommended improved training in the handling of juveniles. So we are sure that many of these problems are in the past, that the situation has improved, but it's concerning to see the local news report last fall about the lack of morale and complaints brought to the public um, by the officers about the state of the department. The memo sent to the city by the officers' union suggested there might still be some concerns with proper supervision. They expressed concern that too much emphasis is placed on public perception and not enough on law enforcement. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Mickey Tessia. I have not working. My name is Mickey Tessia. I have one child um, with special needs at field school, as you all know. I also have another daughter who I don't talk about very frequently because she's not in D64, but you all should know I do have a daughter in sixth grade at St. Mary of the Woods School, and she will be attending Maine South High School. Um, I, I just wanted to come up here. I'm not going to repeat anything that anyone said. Um, you know, I remain unconvinced on the SRO, and, and the reason I say it that way is because I consider myself middle of the road actually on this issue. That might come as a surprise to some of you guys here because as you know I come to all the board meetings and talk about SPED and I'm a little bit concerned that the SRO issue and the SPED issue are getting conflated and they're not. They're totally two different issues. They have overlapping concerns um, and as a parent with a child with special needs of course I, I share the same concerns that other parents have but the two issues are distinct and so I want to make sure that everyone understands that just because I'm a SPED parent Parent means that I believe X, Y, and Z about SRO or anything else. Um, 
and then I, I say that because I don't want the perception, that perception to be used to dismiss concerns that people express or that I express for either issue, okay? Um, but I don't think that the board has demonstrated the need for it in this district. And maybe it can demonstrate that through this committee process, and I'm, I'm happy that we're having a committee. But for me personally, I haven't seen that demonstration, particularly in the context of all the other issues that have arisen in the last you know, six to eight months and all the other resources that we need to, the, the additional resources that you weren't planning on spending that you're going to need, need, need to spend at this point in time. Um, and you know, I'm encouraged about the committee also because I hope to see more of that kind of activity in the future by the board. I think that having stakeholder input, substantive input, which is something, as you know, I've been asking for in the special ed context for months is really important and I think that it could help create a more positive collaborative relationship between the board and the public and even among parents. I ten, before tonight I've never I have never spoken to a parent that was in support of the SRO. I really haven't. So I'm really glad that I heard that you know there those people exist. Um, and I'm, I'm I want to hear that perspective as well. And I just would hate for this to be yet another issue to to be a bone of contention or, or, or reason for divisiveness. I think the committee will help in that process. Um, and then the main reason I wanted to come up is because you talked about the fact that you're going to put a special ed board committee on the agenda for the next board meeting. So I want to thank you for that because I did ask for that. I appreciate that. And then um, I would also ask if you can uh, start thinking about who would be on that committee, um, both on the board and then also outside of the board, because as you know, Dr. Frost starts on July 1st, and I would really love to just you know be able to meet with her as a committee as soon as she starts, and so that just requires some thought between now and June 25th on who should be on the committee. Thank you. If I can, before you get started, can I see a list of hands on how many others would want to speak tonight, just so I get a night, George? Is that two it? more? Two more? Because uh, I don't know if we should take a break no. or not. But for two, please. Yeah. Hi, I'm Alice Dobrinsky. I have a couple of points. I'm actually working from a document that several parents compiled with different questions and concerns. Um, this kind of sums up everything that's been discussed, whether it's piecemeal or not, over the past nine, 10 months or so. You will be receiving a copy of this document, all of you, so you don't have to memorize it tonight. I have two points I'd like to make. These are my top concerns with this program. I am concerned about how parent concerns and complaints will be handled and documented. Why isn't there a clear procedure in place for parents who have a complaint about an interaction between the SRO and their child? Best practices include a mechanism to receive complaints and other input from parents and students. I understand that the Park Ridge Police Department required any mention of a complaint process to be struck from agreement. Why was this okay with Niles, but not the Park Ridge Police Department? The Park Ridge Police Department says their typical complaint process is sufficient, but in order for parents to file a serious complaint with the police, they must fill out a written allegation, form, or affidavit, Parents may feel intimidated and hesitant to do this out of concerns for confidentiality, etc. Further, this does not result in thorough records being kept by the district. Parents should not feel that their only option is to go to the police department and file a formal complaint which will result in their child's name being on the public record, etc. Parents should be able to report concerns directly to the district and be assured that there will be records kept and patterns monitored. Parents should know that their concerns are taken seriously and heard by the administration and school district. If the district's formal uniform grievance procedure is to be used for this purpose, parents should be made aware of this option. 
every student, parent, and guardian in the school system should be fully informed of the complaint procedure, and this insurance should be in writing in a formalized memorandum of understanding. Thank you for deciding to put one together. My next point. We are concerned about insufficient training requirements. Contrary to best practices, our IGA does not require continuing education for SROs. Other IGAs from around the country do so. Topics include civil rights, adolescent development, disability issues, conflict resolution, bias-free policing, cultural competence, restorative justice, and interacting with LGBT youth. Many trainings available from a number of sources, including community colleges and online. Initial training requirements are also insufficient. At the board meeting in May, at the direction of Chairman Borelli, training requirements were removed from our IGA, despite legal counsel's advice not to do so, and despite the fact that the police departments had already agreed to the terms. Officers are not required to have crisis intervention training, advanced juvenile sit training, or specialized training related to children with special needs. Best practices require SRO understanding of de developmentally appropriate, trauma-informed practices for interaction with youth. In May, board member Tom Sotos asked if there was any more specialized training that the SROs could go through related to children with disabilities and special needs. Hines replied, and the time mark on that video is three hours and 54 minutes in. I don't know when that one exists in the world I've ever heard of. They do. Parents can provide a list of many such training programs available to Illinois officers. I understand that point was made earlier, but I just wanted to make sure everybody hears it again. Thank you. Uh, hi everybody, George Monocle. Um, uh, thank you everybody for contributing, that was fantastic. Um, and thank you board for slowing this down and deciding to come up with an MOU. I think that's fantastic. I think we all want to keep the kids safe and that you are doing that in a way that is uh, measured, uh, says a lot about you. Uh, I wanted to just really talk about one thing. Um, I believe our schools need to be building a culture of kids where they're keeping themselves safe. Uh, imposing safety on kids isn't really how it's gonna work in the long run. Uh, they're gonna have to try to be safe themselves. There was a big hole in the teacher training uh, that was identified where there wasn't a lot of restorative justice training. So I did a FOIA request to find out uh, how exactly are our teachers and administrators trained um, I've been substitute teaching for five months and I've decided to do Teach for America. Uh, so I have had training in Teach for America for the last couple of days. And um, I wouldn't even think about going in front of students unless I had taken nonviolent communication training and restorative justice training. I took that on myself, but when I FOIA'd it, I found out that n until like this week, no teachers had had, uh, or administrators had had anything that was described as nonviolent communication or restorative justice training, and that just happened. So I want to celebrate that this board slowed things down and listened. I want to celebrate that uh, Dr. Hines uh, or her team has taken some restorative justice training, but I also want to mention that restorative justice training isn't like you're learning math and you just kind of file it away and you pull it back up whatever you need to it's an ongoing process so every week i go to restorative justice training i practice i work at it and i just hope that uh this committee uh really focuses on that because if you think about it the the sro is only going to talk to the kids or have a presence one day a week every other you know at the school it's not going to be that big a deal the teachers are in front of the kids all day long so i hope the committee looks at what kind of training are the teachers getting and how are they gonna learn so that they're not supposed to call the SRO whenever they're having an issue? Because the way the culture is now amongst teachers and the administrators, it's not clear that they would, they would have any idea how they were supposed to uh, utilize this SRO as they try to build safety in the schools. Thank you. Well, as George said, thank you everybody for attending. It's been eye-opening, informative, and uh, we will continue on the 25th, and we will resurrect our committee at that time. 
and go forth into the community, ask for uh, applications for or whatever the board decides on how we're going to reach out to the community. Uh, and we'll go from there. So any other comments by the board tonight? Not hearing well, any? Um, yes. Eastman had a, a comment earlier before the meeting. Are, uh, I'm wondering whether the board is going to be going back into closed session tonight to continue our conversation regarding Dr. Hines's review, or is there no need to? Are we going to push that off? I know we discussed this. I'll leave that uh, up to the board. Uh, I sent an email out specifically stating that we would have that on the 25th. However, we can reserve tonight for a short time if the board members decide that they would like to confer amongst themselves. Uh, there, and I'll right, this would be without right. you, so there's no preparation on your yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, right, Amongst right. ourselves, if, if that's what you feel you'd like to do. So why don't we just take a consensus. Is uh, Eastman, do you feel that there's a need for us to do any more internal board discussion prior to meeting with Dr. Heinz? <laughs> Um, given that I won't physically be here, but I can phone in on uh, our next meeting on the 25th, I would rather do it in person today. You know, I can do, you know, you can do like 45 I minutes or an hour or something like that. Yep. Um, you know, that, that way it's not awkward over the phone instead of in person. It's okay. We usually have a table with the phone. So okay. like Mark? Sure. Yeah, if Eastman would prefer, you know, giving some more comments to the board in person, I'd rather do that, whatever he needs. And I've got one 30-second thing for the board as well, too. too so. Tom? No. No, I'm kidding. Yes. I said yes. Yeah, sure. I think it's right to give uh, Eastman the opportunity to be here in person. Fred? Yes. Okay. So I will make a motion that the uh, board will go into closed session uh, pursuant to uh, 5 Illinois Compiled Statute 122C2, uh, right uh, C1. 122C1 yeah. uh, to discuss the superintendent's evaluation. And we will uh, uh, end the closed session and not reopen in open session. Um, I'll need a second. Second. Uh, Fred? Yes. Starting with you? Yes. Tom? Tom. Yes. 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 Kerry, thank you for sticking around. I think he's Eastman. Yes. Say yes. Yes. <laughs> thank you. I thought he started. Sorry. Kerry, thanks for sticking around.